Hey guys, welcome to Macintosh Weekly, and today this video is about Mac OS Sequoia 15, Developer Beta 3 Update. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, and now let's begin. Apple today seeded the third beta of an upcoming Mac OS 15 Sequoia update to developers for testing purposes, with the software coming two weeks after the release of the second beta, which added iPhone mirroring support. To update your Mac to Mac OS Sequoia Developer Beta 3, open System Settings, then go to the Software Update section, and then check for updates. Here, you can see the update is available for my device. This Mac OS Sequoia Developer Beta 3 update size is around 2.94 GB for my device. Click on Update Now, and then agree to the SLA to begin the update on your device, and enter the password when prompted. And as you can see, the device has been successfully updated to Mac OS Sequoia Developer Beta 3, and the build number is 24A5289G. Moving forward, and talking about the changes made in this build, we couldn't spot any changes in today's release of Mac OS Sequoia Beta 3. Moving forward, and talking about the Mac OS Sequoia 15 Beta 3 release notes. The Mac OS 15 SDK provides support to develop apps for Mac computers running Sequoia 15 Beta 3. The SDK comes bundled with Xcode 16, available from the Mac App Store. Regarding accessibility resolved issues, fixed user might be unable to play newly added background sounds, fire and night. Regarding app intents known issues, at union value types currently only work as intent results. Attempting to use an at union value as the type of an intent parameter or entity property results in failure to compile. Parameterless parameter and property wrappers might cause protocol conformance failures. The workaround is to use parentheses on the property wrapper regarding App Store new features. Starting in macOS 15, the App Store no longer needs twice the space free for an initial app download and install. The free space requirement will now be the final install size of the app, plus a small buffer. Developers should consider this change in any messaging they might have around size requirements. Regarding AppKit new features, added API to request a window share when the user performs some action in the app. Presenter who starts a presentation while on a video conferencing call can now be given an option to share that presentation with other call participants. This addresses an issue where the presenter might not want to share all application windows and might not have an affordance to start sharing the presentation once it has begun. The API allows one NS window to request sharing of another existing window or of a window to be provided in a callback. Regarding resolved issues, fixed app kits worn once logs have been moved to OS log error with a worn once logging category in order to increase their visibility to developers. Regarding application firewall deprecations, application firewall settings are no longer contained in a property list. If your app or workflow relies on changing application firewall settings by modifying library preferences, com.apple.alf.plist, then you need to make changes to use the socket filter FQ command line tool instead. Regarding ARKit resolved issues, fixed iPhone and iPad apps on Apple Silicon Macs quit unexpectedly when initializing AR skeleton definition. Regarding automation, new features, to improve security, the process of allowing an application to control Finder has changed. Instead of a modal allow don't allow dialog, the attempt to control Finder fails, and a notification appears that directs the user to allow control in system settings, security and privacy, automation. Regarding backup resolved issues, Fixed, attempting to create a new encrypted time machine backup on a time capsule or other AFP file server will fail. Regarding camera resolved issues. Fixed, using presenter overlay in full size mode with a single shared window and reactions at the same time can result in glitching. Here you can also notice a slight glitch when using few of the reactions. Regarding CF network resolved issues, 
fixed CF network execute proxy auto configuration script and CF network execute proxy auto configuration URL have always returned a plus one retained CF type object, but the function declarations were not decorated with the CF returns retained attribute until iOS 18, macOS 15, tvOS 18, and visionOS 2. For C-based languages, the Clang static analyzer might note if the object is leaked. No source code changes are required, but they are encouraged to fix the leak. For Swift, this changes the return type of these functions from unmanaged to the actual CF type return, which will require a source change to fix when compiling with newer SDKs. However, Swift programs compiled with older SDKs will continue to work on the new OSs, though the returned CF type object will continue to leak as it did prior to this change. Regarding Core ML known issues, inference time for large Core ML models is slower than expected on a subset of M series SOCs, which is M1, M1 Max on macOS. Regarding Core ML resolved issues, fixed Core ML model deployment API is unavailable, ML model collection and ML model collection entry. Consider using background assets or NS your session instead. Regarding directory service deprecations, directory service plugin support has been removed developers should migrate to platform SSO. Regarding Finder resolved issues, fixed home videos unexpectedly sync as music videos to iPod Nano, seventh generation. Regarding foundation resolved issues, fixed. Date.components format style was incorrectly producing strings like 1M with the date components format style at style dot condensed abbreviated style and strings like 1min with the dot narrow style instead of the other way around. The behavior was corrected to match the behavior of duration, units, format, style, unit width. Regarding FS kit known issues, users with connected MS DOS volumes might receive an intermittent error on system startup, saying the internal MS DOS partition cannot be repaired and needs to be reformatted. Workaround is rebooting might resolve the issue. Do not attempt to reformat the volume. Regarding headphone accommodations resolved issues, fixed. Headphone accommodations won't be applied to headphones. Regarding iCloud Drive resolved issues, fixed. Frequently changed files syncing over iCloud Drive will use more data than expected. Regarding iPhone mirroring known issues, universal clipboard might not to work during iPhone mirroring. Scrolling with a scroll wheel with Logitech mice or typing with a Bluetooth keyboard might not work with iPhone mirroring. The workaround is to disable Logitech options on Mac to use the scroll wheel on Logitech mice or use a built-in or external Apple keyboard. The spacebar does not work when full keyboard access is enabled. Workaround is to disable full keyboard access. Regarding Maps new features, introduced Place ID, a unique and persistent identifier, added new result types to mklocalsearch.request and additional point of interest category values, introduced Place Card API to show Maps Place Card UI, Talking about the known issues, the PlaceCard API fails to load place details. In searches that use mklocalsearch.request, the result type option physical feature is ignored. Conversion between a point in the map view and a physical location, CL location coordinate 2D, might be imprecise at high zoom levels. Regarding logging new features, by default, the sudo command in macOS does not have logging enabled. To enable logging for sudo, simply remove the line defaults log allowed from sudoers configuration file. Regarding Mac Catalyst new features, when building against the macOS 15.0 Catalyst SDK or newer, UI window scene system frame changes using UI window scene dot geometry preferences. Mac can be animated by wrapping the request in the existing UI view animation API, animate with duration duration. Mixing such system frame animations with animations of individual UI views is not recommended. Instead, rely on auto layout constraints to reposition scene contents during the system frame animation. Talking about the resolved issues. Fixed, starting with macOS 15.0, the activation state of all attached UI scenes in Mac Catalyst apps will now also be changed to UI scene, activation state background, when the machine and or the attached displays go to sleep, as an indication that the scenes are not producing user visible pixels. Fixed, when building against the macOS 15.0 Catalyst SDK or newer, the true value and false value for toggle switch elements, PS toggle switch specifier, in your settings bundle will be respected when reading writing user defaults. Regarding music resolved issues. Fixed, artwork for the currently playing song might be incorrectly displayed in the music. Regarding networking resolved issues, 
fixed. For apps linked on macOS 15, iOS 18 or newer, the default user agent request header field value generated by URL session now includes the unlocalized bundle name instead of the localized bundle name. Regarding notifications known issues, user might be unable to snooze calendar notifications. Regarding object tracker resolved issues, fixed, training object tracker reference objects might fail without warning for unsupported USDZ inputs. Regarding photos resolved issues, fixed, photos and videos might stop syncing via iCloud Photo Library. Regarding power resolved issues, fixed, users with default wallpaper macOS beta on Intel laptops with an AMD GPU might see elevated battery drain, device temperatures, and fan noise. Regarding quick look deprecations, support for deprecated quick look generator plugins is being removed. To provide previews and thumbnails for your custom file types, migrate to Quick Look Preview Extension and Thumbnail Extension API. Regarding security and privacy new features. When attempting to change home directory of a user, DSCL and DS import will trigger privacy prompts. Previously, this did not happen when a device was under MDM management. Regarding Setup Assistant resolved issues. Fixed, File Vault pane is shown and is automatically enabled with recovery key when iCloud is signed in. Fixed, end of setup assistant might only show a blurred background with no text or buttons. Regarding shortcuts resolved issues. Fixed, the shortcuts editor might offer some new actions that are not yet ready for use. If you save a shortcut with one of these actions, you might need to correct it after a future update with the corrected actions. Fixed, some actions are missing from the actions drawer, but are still available for use. Regarding translation new features. Users can translate text and display results in app. See the translation session class and learn more in the WWDC 24 video, Meet the Translation API. Translation now supports translating Hindi in the Translate app, system-wide translation, Safari translation, and the new translation APIs. Regarding wallet resolved issues. Fixed, disbursement requests on Mac might appear as regular payments requests when handed off to iPhone. So that was all about this build. The rest of the build seems identical if you want to know more. Check out Apple's official documentation for macOS Sequoia 15 Beta 3 release notes. So that was it, hope it was useful, consider like for the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, just comment down below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day ahead.